brother. Okay, guys, this week, Pixar has dropped the first teaser trailer for Inside Out 2, and we here at Super Carlin Brothers have been having so much fun diving back into this world of Riley's mind. And by having a blast, what I of course mean is just finding myself in tears over and over and over again. I mean, there's the, the bing pong incident, and then there's Riley's first day of school, and the time where Riley, mom and dad all hug at the end of the movie. Oh my gosh. The point is, since the original Inside Out movie has come out, I myself have become the parent of a daughter who is currently two years old, and I am just actually obsessed with this movie. And I just couldn't be more excited to see what they throw at us next. Hopefully it's just as devastating. Earlier this week, though, we made a video breaking down the new emotions that would be finding their way to headquarters inside of Riley's head. These will include embarrassment, envy, ennui, and apparently they ran out of E-related words because the other one's anxiety. And although it's not a member of the Legion of E, anxiety does seem to be one who's like leading the charge for the newbies. We wanted to explore each of these new emotions and try to understand why they are now present inside of Riley's mind, but also not found in my mom and dad's mind in the future. And the simplest explanation as to why the emotions hadn't been in Riley's mind before now is because Riley is just now aging into puberty. Hey guys, what's puberty? From there, the idea is very similar to what we saw in the first movie, where by the end of the film, Riley was actually able to experience multifaceted core memories. Moments that aren't singularly happy or sad, but simultaneously both. And what we're thinking is that each of these new emotions will have found their way to headquarters where they will leave some kind of a lasting impact on each of the core five emotions before they are ultimately absorbed into those emotions. So maybe for example, anger will be infused with envy and Riley's memory orbs for anger won't all just be like the uniform bright red like they were in the last film, but maybe have shades of red attached to them, demonstrating that not all angry moments are created equally. Oh. Airplane. We got an airplane. The hitch, if you will, is that everything that we've seen so far shows us four new emotions that will be introduced to headquarters, and each of those new emotions seems to have a counterpart with the original Core 5. But as you may have just immediately noticed with some very simple and quick math, there are five original core memories and only four new emotions that are being introduced. And if each of the original emotions is supposed to have a brand new counterpart, then are we missing a 10th emotion? And my personal opinion is that if we are missing that 10th emotion, then almost certainly it is the counterpart to none other than joy. So today we will try to discuss what could the 10th emotion be. So, could Riley have a secret 10th emotion that Pixar is for some reason hiding from us until the movie actually comes out? And if so, what could it be? Well, first of all, I think that this is incredibly possible because if you go back to some of the interviews from the original Inside Out movie, we'll actually learn that the directors and writers were looking at as many as 27 different possible emotions to include before painstakingly whittling it down to the core five. <gasps> and the director of Inside Out 2, Kelsey Mann, has said that he specifically wants to keep to that vision of the five to 27 different emotions. So to be fair, nine, does fall in between 5 and 27, at least the last time that I checked. But I also think it's incredibly possible that they will include a 10th because one simple symmetry, but also there's just a lot of groundwork that has already been laid for this exact idea. And for the original movie, they actually had character designs for some of these other emotions, including the following. There was greed, love, embarrassment, irritation, pride, depression, ennui, and even schadenfreude. That last one is when you take pleasure in other people's pain. Uh. <laughs> Your cries of pain amuse me. Uh. I would just like to make it clear that I don't think I actually possess the ability to experience this particular emotion. I'm a big gasper when people fall. <gasps> Beyond those that did have character designs though, other emotions that were considered, the list goes on. We also had hope, envy, gloom, shame, logic, trust, and despair, just to name a few. But you can also see how a lot of these maybe just got simply grouped together and condensed into other emotions. But before they had even started whittling the number down to, again, what we would ultimately know as the core five emotions, headquarters itself also just had a completely different vibe to it. Rather than just having these simple five emotions that all operated the console in some version of what you could call 
together. HQ was just going to be full of all sorts of different emotions, with some of them obviously being much more prominent and existing out in the front more often, but others would just come from the back room whenever they were needed. Uh -huh. Any work for us today, Joy? We'll call you if anything comes up. The point I'm trying to make, though, is that a lot of time and energy went into figuring out what this kind of configuration might ultimately look like. And as you may have noticed, a lot of the emotions that they considered for the original Inside Out are making it into the sequel. But as we move our way back to that 10th emotion question, one of the things that really stood out to me as I was kind of like freeze framing my way through the trailer to figure out which new emotions would be included is that of the four new emotions, they're all kind of negative, if you will. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I don't personally love being bored or jealous or humiliated or anxious. I mean, don't get me wrong, I experience these all <laughs> routinely, but I don't enjoy it. But to be fair, I also probably wouldn't have said that I enjoyed being like angry, disgusted, sad, or afraid either. But I feel like the original Inside Out film did a really nice job of recontextualizing these a little bit. Anger, for example, is all about things being fair. Fear is all about keeping you safe. Sadness signals to others when you need help and disgust stops you from being poisoned, both physically or socially. That is not brightly colored or shaped like a dinosaur. Hold on, guys. It's broccoli! <laughs> and I can easily see where these new emotions that are gonna be present in Riley's mind will have a similar kind of balancing act. Ennui or boredom, for example, can be a super helpful ingredient in sparking some brand new creativity. Envy or jealousy can not be the greatest when it's directed at somebody like, say, inside of a relationship, for example. But you could also be envious or jealous of somebody else's grades or athletic performance, and it can be a really good motivator. And the known difference and distinction between these two ideas is what is referred to as benign jealousy versus malicious jealousy. And for clarity, we're aiming for benign, but I can almost guarantee that Riley will probably experience some malicious ones. Even embarrassment, while maybe unpleasant while you're experiencing it, can help build empathy for others who are going through similar experiences, like falling and being hurt, therefore the gasp. Anxiety is tricky, and I have a hard time giving it just any credit at all, it's my least favorite. <laughs> it's like worrying nonstop for no reason, and if you know me in real life, you'll know it's basically my personality. But in my defense, I'm pretty sure I'm right. The worst probably is about to happen. I sure am glad you told me earthquakes are a myth, Joy. Otherwise, I'd be terrified right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe. But to be fair, some worrying is good as sometimes it does help prepare you mentally for something negative that could eventually happen. Wait, what? Almost finished with a potential disasters where a scenario is either quicksand, spontaneous combustion, or getting called on by the teacher. And then even occasionally worrying can be kind of fun. Like if you're watching your favorite team play in a really close game or something, like it, it turns into anticipation. Wow, literally only as I'm recording this is it occurring to me that anticipation is just like good anxiety. Who knew? It is not often that I get to throw anxiety a bone, but we did it, people. Go us. And y'all, we need to pause right there to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Y'all at this point probably know that I have been a long time subscriber to Bespoke Post long before they ever sponsored the channel. I got my first box back in 2014, but this past month I did a first and upgraded to one of their select boxes. It's a little bit extra, but I do love a backyard fire pit and the stoked box just comes chock full of campfire essentials. I'm actually obsessed with the poker stick that is included inside of this box because it's good for just like moving everything around once your fire started, but it's also hollow all the way through so you can actually breathe on the coals from fireway to get your fire started. But if that's not for you, then not to worry because Bespoke Post has a massive collection of boxes of awesome for just about every aspect of life. Like for example, if you don't have a space for an outdoor fire pit or don't want to endeavor into something like that, then not to worry because their flame box is actually a portable indoor fire pit. It's so neat. Like if you've never had the luxury of roasting a marshmallow while sitting on your couch watching a movie in your living room, then you're missing Listen out. Core memories achieved. And if you're not sure what you're interested in, you can get started by heading over to boxofawesome.com and taking their quiz and it will help them figure out which boxes might be best for your personality. Each box is valued at $70 but comes in at a fraction of that cost and you can rest assured that 90% of all of the items in each box comes from a new and up and coming brand. So get 20% off your first monthly box when you head on over to boxofawesome.com and use promo code SUPER at checkout. Again, that's boxofawesome.com, promo code SUPER for 20% off your first box. One last time, boxofawesome.com, promo code SUPER. Link is in the description down below. 
But as useful as any of these new emotions may be, none of them are the kind of experiences or emotions that you typically want to experience in the same way you want to experience joy. So for our missing emotion, my thinking is that it's probably something similar to joy, where it's an emotion that you want to be able to experience, but because Riley is missing it, she is unable to. So looking back at the list of considered emotions that were otherwise unused, there are a few that actually immediately stand out that feel like they could fill this particular void. In particular, the ones that stand out to me are love, hope, trust, and pride. Interestingly, from that particular list, both hope and pride were the two that made it the furthest down the line before ultimately being left on the cutting room floor, but we'll come back to them. Let's start with trust, which I think could be a very interesting wrench to throw into a movie about family and parental distancing, which is certainly something that can happen during puberty. Almost no matter what, I feel like it's very likely we will see some amount of breakage of trust and rule breaking taking place inside of this movie. Testing boundaries is definitely a big aspect of this particular time of life. And even in the first film, we saw that Riley actually stole her parents' credit cards and ran away. So it's hard to know what she might be capable of or ultimately do if she's kind of like put under pressure. Only if you're up for a fun scavenger hunt, but I have my own personal story about what I went through during my high school days in our podcast popcorn culture. I won't tell you the name of the episode, but if you scroll through all the titles, you will certainly know it when you see it. But that being said, I also think that trust is one of the least likely new emotions to see show up inside of Riley's mind. For one, we haven't found any existing like artwork or character design that would suggest that like this had previously been like established. Or on the complete flip side of that particular sentiment is that it was heavily established, just not as an emotion, and instead as one of Riley's five personality islands, which is Honesty Island. Oh, I love Honesty Island. And that's the truth. So I'm gonna mark trust as just sort of already included in Riley's mind and move on to our next emotion, which is love. This one feels incredibly important to literally all of us as human beings, you know, love conquers all and all that. It's also something you start to experience like outside of your family for the first time as you are going through puberty with your first like romantic relationships. I'm sure we all still remember that really terrible heartbreak of losing your first significant other when you were in middle school or high school. And I'm sure looking back on it and compared to where you are in life now, you might be thinking to yourself like, oh wow, I was overreacting so much. I thought it was the end of the world. But I personally would also encourage you to not discredit yourself on this particular front. Like what you're experiencing inside of those moments is very real and fierce emotions. Honestly, probably some of my most inconsolable moments of my life happened during the exact stretch that Riley herself is about to go through. Love also feels very related to joy and I can see it making a great character because love can also have a dark side. And this one, when compared to trust, actually did have lots of character models built specifically for it. Plus, we know that Riley has had imaginary boyfriends from inside of her mind before. I would die for Riley. Oh, ugh. And there's even a short called Riley's First Date, so it wouldn't entirely surprise me if we see more of her romantic life explored. Or, and stick with me now, lack there of a love life. And the reason is, is because love currently isn't present inside of her mind. Therefore, she can't experience the emotion at all. <gasps> Devastating. The big thing though about love as a potential character is that it is so big and so important and so central that it feels like an entity all to itself. Who or whatever becomes your love is so important to who you are as a person that once again, it kind of feels like it might just be like its own personality island. So let's keep scrolling down our list. And next up is hope, one of the two emotions that made it the furthest in potentially being included in the first movie. Puberty can definitely feel hopeless at times. And the core five emotions seem pretty hopeless when the demo crew shows up and just like wrecks all of HQ and then just leaves. By the way though, is that not like dead on as to how it felt? Like just everything's in shambles. And I can 100% see a scenario where after Riley has experienced the other new four emotions, anxiety, ennui, embarrassment, and envy, that she might herself be feeling pretty hopeless. Thankfully, what I can only imagine Joy will realize is that if these other four emotions existed somewhere in Riley before now, then maybe Hope does as well, and she will go looking for it and be able to bring it to Riley's mind and allow her to experience hope. Thus ensues a hilarious and heartfelt journey where we all come to realize that the real hope were the emotions that we felt along the way or something. Turns out joy has been the true hope the whole time. Actually, all that feels just pretty bang on to me. I can see that happening. But we still have one more emotion to consider, and that is, of course, 
Pride. Pride is actually one of the most developed and otherwise unused characters from the original film. Ira went on a tirade about how much better he is at cleaning than you are. <laughs> the blowhard. Nobody cleans better than Preston. You hear me, Ira? Nobody. Oddly, yes, he went by the name of Preston, which is a decision that the writers and directors had contemplated for a while, like giving each of the emotions their own names before ultimately realizing that it would just make everything way too confusing. That ended up being more confusing than it was worth, so I was wrong on that one. Pride is another one similar to love that I feel like could have a dark side to it. There's that kind of thin line there between arrogance and confidence. But having a lack of confidence at all inside of yourself also feels like a total symptom of puberty, especially if your entire mind just got demo dayed. Something like that could very easily lead Riley to a lack of sense of self, which is sort of something I feel like we witnessed in the first movie anyway. And this idea of restoring her pride could otherwise just be a very viable plot line for the overall all film. Or another thing that Pixar has been doing is just including LGBTQ plus characters in their movies. In Onward, for example, Officer Spectre talks about her off-screen girlfriend. It's not easy being a new parent. My girlfriend's daughter got me pulling my hair out, okay? In Lightyear, Alicia Hawthorne has a very meaningful on-screen relationship that we just get to see unfold. Oh, I got engaged. Oh, wow. That's, that's great. What's her name? Kiko. She's one of the science crew. In Turning Red, Priya can be seen dancing with this girl here while her friends cheer her on. So if pride is the final emotion, it could be not just about like having confidence in who she is, but also discovering who she is. <laughs> But there you go, guys. Those are our guesses as to what Riley's mysterious 10th emotion could possibly be. Be sure to let us know what you think in the towel section down below. Will it just be nine? Will there be another one that like shows up at the end to save the day? Or or will they just go like full hog and just have like 27 of them just like popping up everywhere? Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to check out our video as to why mom and dad don't have anxiety present inside of their minds, you can check out this video right over here. But until next time, Bye.